This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. It's time to get geeky. It's time to talk tech. It is the awesome cast. I am Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters. Ready to talk with you guys, have some fun, and and talk about the cool things on the internet and on our wrists and whatever else. With me in the studio, my fellow my, my fellow technology professional, he is John Chichilla of Chillatech.net and Gadget Guru for a big ass bank international incorporated. I want to be John Chichilla Esquire. I'm going to start adding things to the front of it because I can't. I'm, I'm running out of things to add to the end of it. So, uh, how you doing, man? You are fresh off of a vacation. Fresh off the beach. Fresh it, off the beach. It's a little different view back in here in Pittsburgh, but Ooh. at least it's not 109 degrees with the heat index. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Makes for, makes for a, the sand was too hot to walk on. Oh no! But it was. It, it rained the third third night, late late at night, and it made it made made it tolerable. And so. there's Chilla with your beach weather report. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, we are, we're we're going to uh, talk some of the tech stories and gadgets that we've got in our hands on uh, uh, as we do on this show. This is the Awesome Cast at AwesomeCast.net. You can su- subscribe, rate, share as well on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Google Music, YouTube, and Facebook. Video and audio versions all over any of them. However you want to consume the awesome, we encourage you to do it right there you can also find us every tuesday about 7 p.m eastern time rolling a little early sometimes we go on live at the stream at live.sorgatronmedia.com our good friend crazy kraus is joining us in the chat room of course and uh, some other people pop in uh throughout the night for this and of course the wrestling mayhem show we do uh on tuesdays it is podcast day because that's how we do it we like to bunch these together we like to have a nice nice night of podcasting a little less than we used to, but still. And you can also find us streaming uh, a replay of what we record here on Tuesdays on the River's Edge, riversedgepgh.com, Thursdays at 8 a.m. after Funny Money. Go check them out, riversedgepgh.com. Also, uh, shout out to our friends, our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash awesomecast. You can become a boss of the show, a contributor to the show. If you're getting something out of this show... And if you're not yet, I have a feeling you will be very, very soon as we uh, uh, work on some new uh, side projects Chilla and I are working on. Yeah, Chilla is going to be working on a new project with me that's going to populate um, um, at least your video feeds of some sort. And we're going to see how we're going to distribute this. But uh, Am I aware of this project? Oh, yeah, yeah, that thing we planned. That thing we planned for that day in a few weeks. Oh, yes, 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 that thing. <laughs> That, that thing, thing on we, a Sunday. That thing we planned on, a, on a day. I don't know which day. It's in the calendar. It's we'll in the calendar. It out. It's we'll in the calendar. It's on the calendar. I should probably start a Google Doc it's, for that. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. We're going to get in here. We're going to get in the studio. We're going to do a thing. And then you guys are going to know about the thing eventually. And you guys are hopefully going to love the thing. Uh, but we give a uh, thanks so much to our friends that do love the thing over at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Of course, this will see business development at this will see on the Twitter. And Mike Fedor of, the, of Mike Fedor Show on Twitter, who I got to see this past weekend at an IWC wrestling show. That was awesome to see him come out and hang out. And then and, and he, I talked to him on Twitter afterwards. He had a great time out there. Uh, so so great to see our our fans in the wild, so to say. Uh, so thank you so much to them. They're they're contributing at the five dollar level. They're executive producers. We give them business cards. Um, they get sometimes you know special gifts like uh, they got cookies for Christmas last year when we did our rounds for our clients for uh, Sorgatron Media. Uh, and we appreciate you guys. You guys are contributing to the show. You guys are actually helping us move the show forward and and showing us that that you guys want the show to move forward into bigger and better things uh, like like some of the stuff that we're working on here and 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 some things that we're working on for awesome chat that are going to be a little different and a little bigger, a little better. I'm hoping here. In the near future. Chilla, you don't know about that one. Yeah, I don't know about that one. <laughs> you don't know about that one. I haven't told the Patreons either, uh, but we're going to we're gonna try some new experiments with that kind of stuff. But anyways, we like to start this show by getting into our awesome thing of the week. Chilla, vacation Chilla, I want you to go first. All right. So while I was on vacation, a box arrived at, at work. 
Did you get a notification? You're like, damn, I'm I didn't, on I, I didn't, I, I didn't get a notification, but I knew I figured it was coming. Um, the Samsung Galaxy Note Seven has oh. arrived. Um, so it was, it was nice to, nice to come back and arrive uh, to, to a nice shiny new device. Um, I will say it's definitely reminiscent of the the Galaxy Seven Edge. Um, not a lot changed, obviously, from the UI perspective. Um, the pen, you don't have to worry about putting in wrong. It will not break the device. Oh, good. They've, it's Leo Laporte proof now. Yes, it is Leo Laporte proof. Um, I'm liking the device so far. It was really interesting. So for those of you who don't know, the, the Note 7 has gone to USB-C on the bottom. Okay. So now they have to ship a different cable. The cables are, are for not. Um, which actually really pushed me into getting a wireless charger just so I could keep continue to use some of the old old cables and keep one cable in the bag so I always have something with me. Side note on this. So so we all experienced this a couple iPhones ago, of course. Yes. Uh, well, geez, I guess a while, a while ago with the, the iPhone 5, five right? Um, was it as painful as when that went? No, because I guess... So, so they did a really interesting thing. So they shipped the device with your regular USB dongle on one end and the C on the other. Ooh. Um, so that's, that's your typical cable. And instead of being micro, it's USB C. In addition to that, they shipped you one converter. So for another micro cable, I could slip this on and it becomes, whereas we were charged $20 a yes. pop for, okay. well, by the way, I'm still using a converter to use my iPhone five S in my old stereo in the bathroom. As the radio, we, we, I have a I have a um, alarm clock dock that I have to use. The, the I'm sure they've gotten on. cheaper. I should buy more for the other couple of things that we still have that are 30 pin connectors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 30 pin will never die. Nope. Um, but the so they, they they ship you this. So if you have another cable, you can use this on the other cable. The other interesting thing, and I didn't realize what the heck it was, is there's they ship you this USB connector, and it's. USB like you would have on the side of your computer um, on one side and USB-C on the other. Um, now, they did do the same thing, to be honest with you, on the, the Samsung Galaxy 7. I paid it no mind and just set it up and went, went along my way. The interesting thing is, is I actually didn't want to have to reset up the phone this time. And I had the 7 sitting right next to the Note 7. So one of the things is there's a there's a there's a switch app. That you can download and it's recently been updated um, from the Samsung uh, Galaxy Store. So what you actually do is you take the cable and you plug it in to the bottom of the USB-C port. Or no, I'm sorry. You take an old cable and you plug the big the big USB end into the adapter cable and you plug that into the bottom of the phone, the new phone. Then you take the old cable and you plug it into the bottom of the other, the old, the old Samsung Galaxy phone, and it tethers them together. And it ex it looks at all the apps that are on one device on, on your old device. It pulls fresh installs from Google of those apps, and then it pulls over all your photos, all your videos. Your if you have a theme installed, it pulls over your theme. Um, it did a really nice job, and it only took. For having almost 25 gig of data on the other device, it pulled it over within 15 minutes. Wow. The, the other interesting thing that I noticed was it actually started charging the old device. It, it, the USB-C port on the, the Note 7 acted as a charging port for, for another device. So I, I actually want to try this with a couple other cables and a couple other devices because the interesting thing, too, that does come up is it says that the application supports BlackBerry, iPhone, um, other other Android devices um, for the conversion process. So it will try to inventory and pull off what it can. I'm wait, wait. So so you're telling me that if I got a Note 7, I could pull off most of what I have on my iPhone 6S? That's what I'm interested in seeing. What can they... What, I'm guessing it can at least get the photos and videos over. Does and I'm it, guessing they expect you to sync with Gmail. Yeah. 
to get your contacts in your mailbox. Like, is it going to do like kind of a comparison of like, okay, I see you have Instagram installed. Oh, hey, here's Instagram on on. on that's what does I. It, that's like, what I don't. Like, know. is there an app match that goes on? You know, like, oh, I see you have this game. Hey, there's a copy of this game over here. Like, 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 mm-hmm. like something like that. That'd be great. So it was. It was a very easy process to convert, and all my icons were in the same place. Um, and it, it, it just worked really well. Um, so I ran, I, I installed a couple extra things for work and I removed a couple extra things. So one of the, the apps that I was sad to lose, um, is the Oculus app for my VR goggles. Oh no. Because with a USB-C port on the bottom and a device, I can't plug it into, to gear VR. You need a, there's a whole new one that came out there's with this, right? A whole new Gear VR. It has a wider it has a wider um, angle, so you can see more left to right. Which I don't fits think with, I'm going to invest in that. Which just fits yet. with the larger phone. I, I I don't think this is a a thing. Like, you know, okay, well let's 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 put it this way. Again, she lives in a different world than the rest of us. Um, where where if you got a Samsung Seven S Seven. Um, like, you know, you're not picking up a note and you need that, right? But even if you if you go all the way back to the S6, mm-hmm. so the S6, like if you look at the, the release level, not the developer goggles, but the release goggles, the release goggles worked with the S6, all the S6 models and all the S7 models. Um, it actually has a, a switch that allows you to shrink and grow how far the connector goes in in from the side on the goggles which allows you to adjust the different heights for the phone um but because of the usb port change going to usb c there's no there's no way to put a converter dongle in there or i anything feel like i fit. feel like this is one of those things where they'll continue to release new versions that just go with the newer phones um and they'll incrementally improve those as they go like i was reading articles about how um, well, yeah, this is the most comfortable of them and everything, right? Mm. It was a little like, light. I think it was a lighter. It had the wider, yeah. wider viewing angle. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, I mean, they're going to, they're going to iterate and they can't cause it's, I can't imagine. I mean, it's a hundred dollar device that they're giving away for free. So I can't imagine it's much to manufacture these things. It's a piece of plastic and some glass yeah, and some glass and some, some, I want to say probably low level electronics cause your phone's doing the heavy lifting. Like obviously there's some buttons and stuff that, that, that go through there. Um, there's pass through for power pass if you through for charge. power which didn't seem to work for me by the way on hmm. the SDK um, so I don't, I don't know I don't know maybe I did something wrong on that one but um, yeah I, I think I think yeah you're going to see this you're going to see other versions so don't be surprised when you're like oh there's a newer one yeah, yeah but there's a newer phone too with that that's like buying the new next version of Oculus that's an R600 box the, the, the two cool features that, that I saw right off the bat and they, they kind of revolve a little bit around the S Pen when you when you if you're familiar with the swipe in from the right on a, on a Samsung device to get like the edge menu to come up it's right. kind of like that but it's when you eject the S Pen there's a there's a, what they call I think an air menu that comes up on the right, and there's a there's a there's an app it's called Smart Select and it it allows you to select an area of the screen and take a screen capture. Um, they they actually allow you to marker the screen and then record that section of the screen, or you can obviously drag the entire screen, which I thought was a really cool feature. If you wanted to show someone how to do something. Um, you can also save it as an animated GIF. You don't have to keep it in like a in a, in a higher end format, so it's pretty small and compact. The other thing that they took into consideration, and much like an iPhone, you hit the home button and the power button to take a screen capture. Same thing on this device, but one of the options they give you is scrolling capture. So if you want, if you had a web page that you wanted to screen capture, and it was it, it spanned multiple screens. It will actually allow you to scroll and it will capture and, and assemble a long screen into one screen capture, which I thought was really cool because there's a couple times for work or for some stuff that I'm doing. Um, there's there's menu panels that 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 you have to scroll through um, and I want to take the entire menu panel, but it's more than one screen. So then what I end up doing is taking a screenshot, moving down, taking a screenshot find where they overlap, reassemble them in Photoshop, flatten in the image. You know what I mean? Um, 
This you just scat, you just do the screen capture, hit the button for scrolling capture, and it it lets you capture that all into one hmm. one image, which I thought was really nice. So those were two of the big features that I liked. But I do a lot of documentation work and a lot of you know, tutorials and stuff like that. Um, so those were two things that were big for me right off the bat. Um, the pen feels a lot like the old pen. The one thing that um, actually I now I want to go back to the S7 um, and try and I wish I would have on vacation had I known that I was going to have this right away. I do kind of want to check the waterproof because it is supposed to be able to be submerged for up to a half an hour and up to I think like three meters of water. Um, it would be nice to just not have to worry about taking it into a pool to grab pictures of the kid. Mm -hmm. um, not worrying about it getting uh, water in it at the beach. I, I, I really wish I would have. Well, they show it coming out of the water on the on the web page here, so uh, I, th I think they're calling for you being pretty it, okay. It it, it makes me a little nervous with the pen going up in there. Like there, that's to me the pen and the port are the, the areas I worry about. Um, the one thing that I wish they would bring back, and I haven't seen since the S six, is I miss the infrared port. I miss being able to go, and I had rooms set up. I don't know if you've used the Peel app that comes with the device, and you can actually set a, a, a widget panel, swipe down panel. Um, being able to walk into any room, mess with stereo components, mess with TVs, um, is definitely, to me, a benefit, because it kind of makes your phone a universal remote anywhere in your house, anywhere you go. Um, I wish they, if they brought back one thing, I wish it would be the infrared port. Um, the other thing I was happy about is obviously this device has removable storage, much like the S7. It, they brought it back in the S7 from the S6 line. Um, the Galaxy Note 5 did not have an SD port or SD card slot either. Um, to me, that's a big thing, especially when you get into to VR, if you want to throw a bunch of videos or anything like that. Um, I haven't actually connected it up to the Gear 360 yet. I can't imagine anything's going to be that different. Um, there is a spec bump from a speed perspective, but I really don't think it's probably going to make that. It's not like it's going to be any more reactive. It's still still using point-to-point -point Wi-Fi. So, um, no, but overall, I mean, very super easy to set up. That's the one thing I will say. And I'm, I'm definitely going to try plugging it into some other devices to see how it converts them. So if you want a big ass phone, it is well. Here's the other thing: it's it's less than a quarter inch bigger than the S7. It's not that big, In fact, right? Because the 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 phones like the S the S series phones have been getting bigger as we go too. I mean, just like these have. Like this is the standard phone now, mm -hmm. right? Is is this size on an iPhone with the the success? And I don't realize how much bigger this has gotten until I sit the uh, uh, 3GS inside of it, the, <laughs> basically. Interesting. Krauss took his S7 and put it up to this with no, the the Note 7 with no case on, mm -hmm. and with Krauss's case and his case is hairline. I mean, it's not like a big otter box or anything. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's of the same size. This, and then you notice that the screen's like not even a, a, probably a, a eighth of an inch higher. I mean, you're not getting that much more real estate. Yeah. Um, out of it, but. We'll say it's it's definitely it has a nice feel. To it. Such small figures here. Mm -hmm. like, oh, it feels so much bigger. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of where we're at with phones now. So, but there's a comparison point, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like, you know, who knows what the uh, iPhone Seven in a month is going to uh, reveal? You know, hopefully something more than we took away from your headphone port that everybody's talking ad nauseum about. Oh, can I get a podcast with? You know, please, can I have a podcast with yet another debate on whether? Uh, uh, taking away the headphone port's a good idea. Ah, oh, jeez, I'm starting to start. I'm going to start skipping that conversation on Mac break at this point. I'm mm -hmm. just over it. I'm just absolutely over. But they it. and they, but the problem is they work it into every conversation. They do, they do, it's because ridiculous. that's that's the like they, they, they like everybody falls for the trombie. Hell, we are now. You know, we only have two weeks till we have. You to... have two weeks till we can shut up about it or have <laughs> something to actually talking about talk about. Wouldn't it be funny if they they kept it? I hope they do. <laughs> I hope they do. To throw egg on everybody's face that's been talking about it. Have we talked about it once on here? I don't think so. I mean, that's like this it's, inaugural. This, inaugural the inaugural. <laughs> let's talk about the stupid thing everybody's saying about the iPhone that's about to be announced that we don't really know what it's about. Um, 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 situation here. So, geez, I don't know. 
Uh, I don't know. Anyways, anyways, um, what are we doing? So, so, so if, but all in all, if you're if you're looking for a new new device and and you're looking for something that has a lot of added benefit, like the the pen, I, I feel like even for taking notes, it's it's really really nice. It makes me really really want the iPhone Seven to be a, allow me to use my Apple Pencil, um, because the one the, like the one feature. If your screen's locked and you pull out the pen, it puts the screen into instant memo mode and you can literally just start taking a note and it'll save it to the device as, as a memo, which okay. I, I think is really nice. You don't have to unlock the phone. You don't have to do anything. You need to jot down the phone number. You need to do whatever. It, it, the, the phone definitely goes well beyond the average needs of probably the average consumer. But if you're if you're business or you want to start to migrate to putting everything on your phone, to me this is this is definitely a device. Awesome. Well, uh, I'm my awesome thing is going to be something for your face. Is it going to make your face melt? It, it might. It, actually, it might. I don't know. Like, <laughs> you know, it'd be horrible if these things like start catching on fire and people's faces are getting burnt. But wow, that's a really horrible <laughs> thought. Really actually, horrible. that's that's like that was not. The best moment there. I meant like melt your face off like it's that exciting. <laughs> uh, sure, that too. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so this came around and it got me thinking about things. But of course, I'm still playing Pokemon. I went on a Poke Walk today. I had a coffee. I had a coffee appointment uh, in the strip today and ended up Poke walking back into town and taking a train back home. And it was it was kind of nice, right? Uh, but maybe maybe uh, smart glasses uh, could make uh, hands free Pokemon Go a reality. There it is. Uh, apparently, this guy, this uh, Nicole, Nicole Lee. Oh, I remember Nicole Lee uh, from Engadget. She's been a phone and gadget uh, girl for a while for CNET and stuff. Uh, but uh, at the Intel Development Forum, she got to check this out. Uh, so they were developing a version of Pokemon Go, a little bit lower resolution, um, but for the Recon Jet, which I'm sure we've talked about on this show, is one of those Google Glass alternatives. It is a full Android device. And uh, yeah, they're adapting it for it, and and should be good to go. Uh, it's not entirely complete at this point. Uh, of course, they've had to adapt it, and I'm not sure if they're doing it entirely with the blessing of uh, Niantic entirely. But uh, but still, that seeing this is a possibility. Uh, you know, I've said multiple times, if 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 this existed with Google Glass, Google Glass would still be a thing, right? And 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 this could make something like this a a, a really prominent thing. But then I got to thinking, I feel like we can already do do this because there was something we were talking about. And, and to be honest, I do have a little reminder to myself to keep an eye on this thing because I still want this for video production, like for videography. But there was that one device, the Viewfine, which actually just is, it's, it's a Google Glass type kind of headset, but it just takes basically the input from your phone or a video camera. And I'm thinking like that, is kind of a ready-made and cheaper solution. Just hook up the phone that you have already. It, it, it displays it in front of you, and you can play your Pokemon in the safety and not running out in the traffic. And again, I like these better than kind of a goggle theory because obviously you can continue to see out in front of you the glasses that... that you could play they... Pokemon while bike riding, according to that one. You're going too fast. <laughs> Are you a passenger? Are you a passenger? <laughs> yes. Um, but no, yeah, no, I think that I think that's a, a great possibility. And um, I, uh, you know, maybe not Pokemon, whatever the next thing is, if Pokemon's actually fading, like I'm seeing articles, Pokemon's not keeping people. Oh, I, no. I don't know about that. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. I think it's, I think it, for, for every person that loses, it's probably picking up an equivalent amount. Exactly. I think people are just trying to get you to click on their news article. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Um, but uh, can we talk? I, this is a side note off of this since we're talking Pokemon. Actually, let me take a break and then we'll talk about uh, uh, something. I, di I don't have this in the notes, but since we were kind of talking about uh, this kind of situation, um, I need to bring up something that Doug has shared. I think you may have seen it on Facebook, perhaps. And actually, you might not have shared it on Awesome Cast, but still, I think it's worthwhile for this. But, anyways, want to give shouts to our friends at Slice on Broadway. Uh, surprising, uh, su supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepper Oni pizza. And of course, check them out. Their location there here in Beachview on Broadway Avenue, hence slice on Broadway or main street down there in Carnegie PA or at PNC park, 
home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. A lot of people going down to the games recently or the concerts or whatever's going on at PNC Park lately and getting some slice because they've heard about it here. Thank you so much. Support our friends that support this show. SliceOnBroadway.com. PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter or look for Slice on Broadway on your Facebook or your Instagrams. Oh, such good stuff. I just had lunch with Fuzzy, Frank Chinoweth, our engineer friend on this podcast uh, uh, last week. And uh, he's, he was coming into town. He's like, I got to have Slice. I'm like, all right, let's meet up there. I will not say no to that. Uh, so really cool and really cool hanging out there lately. Uh, so go check them out. Beachview Original. All right, let's talk about Pokemon some more. Let's talk about some people not happy about Pokemon. Let's talk about Erie PA and Presque Isle. Erie PA isn't happy. Presque Isle is not happy about the Pokemon players. They would like you to stop playing the Pokemans at the Perry Monument. What's the Perry Monument? Exactly is part of this problem. (laughs) Right? Hold on. I'm trying to scroll by the other story that I'm really mad about this week. Uh, so, so I can I can get to it, but um, but yeah. So apparently, the people that maintain, et cetera, the uh, uh, Perry Monument, monument, there has been a, a lot of extra people around. Cool. Um, so Perry Monument is you know for Commodore Perry. Um, I think he was a boat Commodore or whatnot. You know, and there's a lot of ships up there in Erie. Uh, for all the boat battles and war, wars that happened back there, and, and up in Presque Isle, there's a nice um big kind of obelisk statue in, in commemoration of Commodore Perry. Um, and it, as you do when you're playing Pokemon, you find that a lot of these uh, historical significant places are, you know, Pokestops. So, uh, so yeah, they're not happy about that. They said all these people are here for the wrong reason. Go away. And I'm summing up the article. Um, but uh, And this is at GoEerie.com if you want to check this out. Uh, Perry Monument is a go-to spot for Pokemon players, and they're not happy about it. Someone needs to get don't go Perry.com. Don't what? Is, what was the site? Go, go Eerie. Go don't go Eerie. Go Eerie. And, dot com. And, and make it like a Pokemon stop site just for Eerie. <laughs> Pokemon places not to go. But um, but no, they said. I mean, and there are there are certain things like apparently. Apparently, and now it's giving me the uh, I have six story views left on this, so you may have some problems if you go. Oh, why can I wa- can I look at it now? Are you letting me read this thing? Oh, whatever. I gotta log in or something. But anyways, um, so I'll have to paraphrase since GoEerie.com has a paywall. Um, yeah. So so you know they're they're complaining about the amount of people that aren't there for the right reason, um, which you know kids and I think for the most part probably right. Or maybe they're running around because like, there's a Pikachu over here. And everybody goes stampeding towards where that kid was, I guess. I've never experienced that phenomenon happening. Like we saw in a video in Manhattan when there was a Valparian in uh, Central Park. I I don't believe, I won't believe it until I see it. Um, I've seen gatherings of Pokemon players. But But they're they're peaceful and quiet. It's not like they're causing riots. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. But between that, they're like, there's more trash because there's more people. It's just, it's, I I feel like, and Doug, and our friend Doug Durda, uh, shouldidrinkthis.com, was discussing, like, it's really unfortunate that these guys don't see the opportunity they have here, that people are coming to your thing that they probably would have driven by or not cared about. I've driven by like, oh, there's a statue over there. Oh, whatever. I stopped once and I know it's a Commodore Perry statue. Guess what? I'm not going to again because it's a statue over there. Oh, wait, there's a bathroom. Let's stop. Um, you know, I mean, that's that's it. That's the, the matter of fact. I don't know what, what these people want. And the I feel like, you know, if you're really interested in people coming to your thing, seeing your thing, and maybe learning about it, they're like, all oh, these people are playing Pokemon, they don't care what's there. Sure, probably a lot of them, but I know I'm looking, and I'm like, oh, there's a thing over here? Oh, there's a mural over here. Oh, I didn't know that building was there. I never looked up at this thing, right? Well, not even for the ones that I don't know what they were, like, if I know what it is, I know what it is, and that I just go, I swipe at the stop, collect my stuff, and go. When there's ones that are in places where I don't know, or it's a plaque that I don't know about, yeah, I tap on. If you tap the picture, it gives you this this that 
description to tell yeah. you what it's all it lets about. You know, it's like it's that all that information from Field Trip. Yeah, they're still using the There's, information from Field Trip. Yeah, and it's and the, but they carried forward into Ingress. Yeah, it's the same information in there. I, I was mean, using uh, Field Trip on Google Glass. It would pop up, hey, the such and such is over here. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I didn't know that was over there. You know, it's the same thing. Um, and you can dig in on that. And there is an opportunity for you to, to. Oh no, I didn't know that Erie's Press Guile responds to Pokemon Go outcry. I want to see if this this is part of the follow up. Balanced solution pledged for players at park. Oh no, there's actually there's this is a developing story, <laughs> but. <laughs> Um, and, and that was the thing, and 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 you know, there's a discussion on this, and somebody was commenting that apparently works in a nonprofit and or something like that, and says I, I couldn't even explain to you why why this is a bad thing for the nonprofit stuff. Meanwhile, I'm talking with people at nonprofits, and they're like, how do we get to use this? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, how do we become a pokey stop? How do we make? How do we get people interested in the thing we're doing? Right? Um, and, and I think, I mean, it's a park. I, you know, I, so I, I don't know if that's different. You know, I understand the, hey, more people come. Now we have to deal with the trash. Yeah, but more people come. What's the park there for in the, in the first place? Right? Only to be viewed from Google Earth. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Only to drive by once a year and, 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 and leave. You know, is, is that it? You know, uh, it, it's, it's there to be discovered and to be experienced, right? And that experience is changing, and you you kind of have to adapt to the times. Um, I forget what exactly Doug asked, but I, and I said I said yeah, they'll come around in six months when they're reading an article about how um, X similar statue nonprofits park something took advantage of this Pokemon Go phenomenon and and achieved something with it, and they realized that they they, they missed the boat on it mm -hmm. that something that was sitting there right in front of them, literally crowds of people sitting there right in front of them that they're not activating more than just playing pokemon i mean go downtown i'm watching I'm, I'm i'm walking through downtown today and i see stores that have pokemon signs out front on their on their sandwich boards and right across the street there's a lure on a pokestop i saw the same thing on vacation i mean it was the stop here the interesting thing was there was like there was a couple stop here this is like an attraction and they had the instagram logo like and they told you what hashtags they wanted to use and a lot of them the sign right next to that was this is a pokey stop and like it's it's definitely an up play and it brings mm -hmm. people to your location that levo you know. subs in mount lebanon is across the street from a gym you can't really reach the gym well i guess you can from actually i think you can from like the front booth okay. i think we discovered that last week but Again, they're not a pokey stop. They're next to a gym, and you walk in there, and they may, they have a little EV drawn on their specials board. Uh, and by the way, here's our Wi-Fi password. Right? Yeah. You know, they're welcoming of this. They're seeing the kids walking up and down, looking at phone. It's like, well, let's get them to come in. Let's put you know, and, and let's attract those people for business. And again, that's different than the Perry Monument. I, I understand. It's like, yeah, let's get the people in because we can make money off of them, right? But uh, but that's that's what it, but what could you accomplish with as Perry Monument people? And I'm put, not put know, a donation bucket out there. Put put pamphlets about about what the attraction's all about. I mean, help inform people. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure there's a certain percentage that are either going to drop the change in their pocket or pick up a pamphlet and learn more. I, I, I don't see why it's such a bad thing. Exactly. And like I said, there, there's a, there is an article here. Um, I will put this right now, actually. I'll put it in response to Doug's thing. And, uh, well, I can't show that one on the air. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll put that in response to Doug's thing, and we'll actually... Uh, I'll... Have I shared this to Awesome Cast? I want to reshare this to Awesome Cast. And uh, so go check out our Awesome Cast Facebook group. We uh, uh, are posting a lot of stories there. I'll actually switch it to me. Sorry about that, Chilla. I hope you weren't picking your nope. nose. Nope. Uh, but uh, <laughs> that'll be over on the Awesome Cast group over on uh, Facebook groups. And uh, these stories and, and a few more that we're kind of following as we go. Uh, so I'll have to read that story a little bit later. Uh, Chilla, what else is going on that interests you in the world of technology things? Hmm. Go to the last uh, the last one. Are there, are there enough echoes? So one of the things that, I, that I, I, I heard about through multiple news outlets today was that, it, that Amazon's looking to launch its own Amazon Echo exclusive streaming music service. 
What? So if you have an Amazon Echo, you're going to be able to buy into an, uh, the the music streaming service, which I, I'm kind of confused on this because they're saying it's a $5 per month subscription price point. If you have the Amazon Echo, I'm guessing you're a Prime member, which doesn't Prime give you access to a decent sized music library as well as giving you space to sync your music library. So uh, I'm kind of confused. I know, as, they, I know they used to. Yeah, I think they still do. So I'm kind of confused as to why you need to be an Echo customer or why they're targeting Echo customers and are there enough? And don't get me wrong, I want an Echo. I don't have one. But I also, other than some people I listen to uh, that are pretty famous on podcasts, I don't know a lot of people with these devices. I mean, do you know anyone with an Echo? No, I don't. Only only the people on podcasts talk about them all the time. Right. So, so <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of confused as to, I, I think the idea is great. It just seems like an odd pitch. Like, why wouldn't they say, get Amazon streaming on is this X a, amount of devices? Is like, this exclusive? Absolutely exclusive to the Echo itself? That's what they're saying. For $5 a month, which beats beats Apple mm-hmm. to that $5 a month price point. Um, man, I, I don't know. It's... This is inter- there's interesting figures in here because it's talking about how it's really imp- it's a really important price point because um, the average iTunes user spends sixty dollars per year on downloaded music, which translates to that five dollars per month. So they're trying to bring that in, but as a music service because that's that's apparently a, a pretty decent. Um, yeah, it says to be unlimited and ad fr- free, although it will be constrained to Echo players and won't work on phones. That's that's odd. I mean, it's five dollars a month because it's on the Echo, and it's probably why they got a better deal on the music because it's not boom everywhere. Uh, Amazon's kind of throwing everything out there, aren't they? Maybe they're just trying to look to see what sticks. I'm, yeah. I'm definitely interested. If anyone out there has an Echo and is interested in this, let me know why. Hmm. Um, because the other thing is, is, I look at like some of the other streaming devices and other. Like when you look at Spotify and Apple and everything else, you can get it here, 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 and here. You can get it on your phone. You can get it on the the device in your bedroom. You can get it on the computer. You can get it wherever. I, I feel like are they? You could, now I'm only going to get it. It seems like everyone wants to put their Echo in their kitchen. So I'm only going to get it in my kitchen, or or is this going to make me want to carry my Echo around? Listen, if you're a homebody, I guess it's not a big deal, right? But you're still got to be confined to one room unless you're putting echoes everywhere. Yeah. And then I'd be looking at Google's coming Gives you a reason to buy more echoes for your home. Maybe. I guess. I don't know. Because then I think of like Google's coming out with their, their home, that speaker pod, that also you can talk to, much like the Echo. And then as a Google customer, why wouldn't I invest in their streaming service again if I invest in it? But they're saying that I get it on a computer, I get it on a speaker. another reason for you to be an Amazon customer. Everybody's looking for more reasons for you to be in their exclusive ecosystem. Whether that's everything Amazon now with devices that also help you buy toilet paper, Google, where well we have search and we have email. And by the way, if we if you use this kind of service and your email knows what you're dealing with that service and you're traveling or whatever the case may be, right? Like it's all about bringing you all into that like service locking, right? So this is something that that appeals to the people that are. I guess. But do you feel like you're that? I mean, I, I'm definitely sticky to Amazon. Don't get me wrong. I yeah. mean, I use the, I use Prime for some, some video stuff. I use Prime for ordering physical stuff. I just, they wouldn't. I, I guess maybe I'm the oddball out. They're not my first pick for my music streaming provider. No, no, they're not. They're not. I because because I don't go services with them. And but this isn't also something that's going to make me want to look at it and go, oh, they have this. Maybe I should. This is a. To me, it's not even a add on like this is another reason to buy an Echo if you're not already an Echo customer. I don't know. It it, it just confused me. It's a small chink in what they're doing. Mm-hmm. I think in the long run. We're Google or we're Amazon users, but we're not that kind of Amazon user. I mean, I look at I've gone from Chromecast to Amazon Fire Stick to Apple TV, right? 
I'm, you know, whichever one fits for me right now. You have a problem with the monkey over there? The monkey, you have the monkey problems falling. over there? Monkey's falling on you? I, I took care of it. Okay. Took care of the, the monkey. monkey's off my back. But, <laughs> McDonald's is in the news. This is not new. This, I do I, find this interesting. It, 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 this is something that's been going for a little bit, uh, but I have a new wearable. Um, there you go. Uh, it is a step it. It's blinking. It's blinking because I'm active. That is my reward. But I always think it's interesting when our Happy Meals involve technology. And now um, there are several of these looking at the article in, in Gadget. There's different ones with a screen. There are different ones. There are different ones. Uh, uh, Doug said that he got his kids got one with the with, with the, the screen on it and everything. Uh, but yeah, there's a few of them. They come in multiple colors. I'm glad I didn't get the pink one. I asked my wife to pick up a Happy Meal uh, on her way home the other day and I was because I was kind of curious. This thing apparently blinks. And the whole idea is that you you are active. And you know you are active because it blinks. Does the other one at least count your steps? I think the other one counts your steps, yes. Do um, the, the, the buttons on the front do anything or no? There are no... Act- like, there's kind of an on and off button, but I'm not even sure that... Hold on. So it just kind of blinks every time I hit it. I don't know. I maybe, don't that, know. maybe that wakes it up if it fell asleep. Maybe, maybe that's, that's what happens. That could be. By the way, it's electronics in your Happy Meal. Um, and, and, and the whole kind of, you know, wearable... St- uh, Fitbit device ish kind of thing that it very much kind of resembles, right? Out of this pebble here. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Kids getting into wearable devices in their hot Happy Meals. It'd be nice if it like had an NFC chip that you could at least download some of the data off of or something. The blinking just seems. It's also a Happy Meal. The blinking makes me want to like rip the thing apart and wire it into my shoes so my shoes blink when I move. Like those kids' shoes. You ever seen those? No. no. Happy Meal. Happy Meal. Happy Meal. But kid, I don't know. I at least well, then, the then we are encouraging kids to be hackers because they can see that circuit board in the back and say, ooh, what can I do with it? You know, if you're one of them that took their computer part and and was really worried that you had not put the three thousand dollar computer back together properly when the video card wasn't seated and it didn't boot up and it freaked you out instead you have a happy meal with the circuit board you can play with maybe and or maybe it's they're they trying to get you to buy more happy meals so they put a bunch of the screenless ones in most of the happy meals and then they're like mom dad i need another happy meal mine didn't have a screen this one's this one's bs <laughs> man <laughs> more just, happy meals just looking at me and has a picture of somebody walking and jump roping and playing volleyball or something. So, do you, so yours says "step it" on it, right? Yeah, they okay. all, they all, they all say, say "step, step it. it." Like that's kind of like the brand under it or something like that. So, made for McDonald's, 2016, China. There you go. <laughs> um, no, I thought it was an interesting kind of play that they're doing there. So, uh, so yeah. I'll be interested to see do they continue down the path of kind of like the electronic toy route. Obviously, there there was a cost. It was cost effective enough to put that in in every. Yeah, and, um, and it's it's meal. such a simple thing. I mean, how many like little five dollar toys have little circuit boards in them at this mm-hmm. point? And you make them in mass in China on the levels that that McDonald's is going to for their worldwide deployment, and and it, and if it rolls with their fitness active mcdonald's you don't have to be fat and have mcdonald's kind of a kind of uh initiative they've been doing for the last several years right uh no i think that's i think it's a good thing if it, if it gets some kids out there and active just like pokemon go uh i think it's a good thing in the long run and i'm just curious about them you know kind of being into the wearable market chilla i see you have something for my wardrobe in here is it the Xbox onesie? It is the Xbox onesie. And that's that's Xbox One Z. Oh. O-N-E-S-I-E. Oh. oh, it's adorable and and S- awesome. Scroll scroll down to the next picture because that's the one that really gets it. It looks like you're ready to land on the moon. It well, especially because like there's a there's a pocket in the sleeve for your cell phone. Ooh. Um I bet an Xbox controller will fit in there. It might. Well, I think the Xbox controller is meant for the big oversized pockets in the front. There's a lot of places we could go. It that, appears that aren't correct. I mean, you know, uh, at first glance, it just appears we're we're like 
It looks like this is how you're supposed to dress to the uh, Xbox One key party. I guess if you're not a gamer, you get the black one and you get popcorn. And if you are a gamer, you get the white one and headphones. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. This is the same girl, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I, so there you go. Uh, Xbox with the fashion. <laughs> what is the... What, so, wait. Are they selling this on their store or something? It's an Australia-only item for now. Um, and they're not even sure when this is going to go on sale. It just says soon is available in white, and unlike the X1 itself, black. Oh, you're so clever and gadget. Uh, so there you go. Have you have you worn a onesie lately? Show title. <laughs> well, because I, I I actually have an Iron Man onesie. It is super comfy. <laughs> We're learning so much. <laughs> That's great. So I would actually consider one of these onesies because the pockets are really nice i just don't think i well i guess i am admitting to it i don't think many people are going to admit i bet you these fly off the shelves and no one admits to owning them <laughs> <laughs> it's the biggest secret the the oddly it, it sold more 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 units than halo but nobody will admit that they did it Everybody wants one, mm. but no one will admit it. No, I think this is. I think you'll see a bunch of people wearing this to to, com, to, to E3. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think I think you're gonna have a Xbox onesie slumber party uh, in the hotels. You know, I mean, it's uh, it seems like the right kind of thing. It's like this is the video game very of, version of furries. Uh, it's 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 yeah. I think it's this is. I want one. I do want one. <laughs> I, just, I, seriously, I want one too. I seriously do want one. You know what? Chachi just went to PlayStation. He sold off all of his Xbox One. You know stuff. what they don't have? You know what they don't have? Onesies. You don't got a onesie. <laughs> Guess what, Chachi? You don't get the onesie with your PlayStation, do you? In Australia, <laughs> maybe. Um, you you're not invited to the to the to the the onesie uh, uh, video game slumber party that we're gonna have. Nope. You left more than your gamer points behind, buddy. <laughs> He's never going to listen. He's, he's going to come back. He's going to come back just for the onesie. He's going to come back for the onesie. Yeah, man. It's like, I should have waited a week. I, I wonder if this will be like onesie. a Christmas thing. I wonder if there'll be like a Black Friday. <laughs> get an Xbox, get a onesie. Yeah. If there's an Xbox that comes with a onesie, I don't give a crap how much money I got saved up. <laughs> I am getting that. I'm like, I am in. I am in. Time to upgrade. It's onesie time. All right. We spent way too much time on that one. Um, so this was an interesting. Um, this was an interesting thing that that, that came up. So uh, there, there's all these references. Oh, this is like Rent the Runway, but for gadgets. And I'm like, what the hell is Rent for Rent the Runway? Which apparently you were telling me. Rent the Runway is Rent the Runway is a site where you can rent um, high end fashion that came off the runway, um, things that you probably couldn't normally afford. Um, but it is a rental. You can rent it, I think, for a weekend or a week. Right, or right, right. So this is a a site called Grover that does it for gadgets. Um, but yeah, it's it, it, so I'm reading and it says uh, da, 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 da. so you you pay you rent the consumer electronics at an affordable monthly fee compared to full retail prices at least according to Gadget. Thirty percent of what you pay is going towards your purchase of the device. So you can either rent it. So this is like rent a center for gadgets. Um, you, you can, let's see, a letter that people with products sent to them for $25 a month. Subscribers had to return the devices after each month or choose to buy them. Okay. All right. So it's kind of a nice try it kind of situation. You could, you could, you know what this could be nice for if you're a certain podcast with only so much budget and no connections to, uh, press or media to get, uh, uh review copies of things. Actually, it could be a nice thing if you're somebody that wants to try out a lot of stuff for some reason, right? Yeah. So if thirty percent of your twenty five dollars goes towards the purchase, that's I guess it's not that much to rent overall, but thirty percent of twenty five bucks isn't a lot either. Or is each price is each thing different? I yeah, because it's saying that you're only keeping them for like a month, right? Right. So and it sounds like I can't. Can I? Can I rent more than one consecutive month? I'm guessing you can rent more than one month. Right. So like, I'd be interested in this. You know what I'd be interested in this for? Is a, a Google Nexus device that can run NuGet until my devices get NuGet. Yeah, yeah. Or or something like this. Um, um, some devices like the Apple, actually the Apple Pencil, 
the Nemo weather station are as cheap as ten dollars a month. You can get VR goggles for nineteen ninety a month. What? You can get a Nintendo for nine ninety nine a month. That's actually, under ret- under their retro gaming area. That's actually not terribly. That's that's actually what this actually kind of if, in, in in a world where. Like a lot of people are, are kind of not owning things anymore, whether it be cars, you know, uh, this feels like the right kind of thing. Um, I, I mean, obviously, in the long run, you're going to pay X amount more. But if you're like, well, I could pay three thousand dollars for this computer or I could pay, um, you know, was this twenty five dollars a month and then always kind of, you know, kind of like the next plan kind of idea. Right. Where you are all you're always playing paying X. You never actually pay for an entire phone, right? But you always have the newest phone after every year or after however you set the plan up, right? Um, you don't pay to own a phone. You pay to have a phone in the long run. You, you, it, it, you know, so, you, again, you don't actually own or possess anything. You know, you just kind of pay into it. I, I think for, you know, I think a lot of us were like, that's a crazy idea. But I think for certain people, this is not bad. Um, there is something about... Well, go ahead. The one thing, that, and then I was looking at like the gadget section, they have the Moto Hint, which I don't know if you remember that. That's the that's the fully in-ear Bluetooth headphone that like uses some bone conduction and, and whatnot. I don't know if I want... To use someone <laughs> else's, yeah, because I hope they like, like like they're they're completely disinfecting everything that comes back to them, right? Yeah, that that I'm not into, but like they have these trackers on here. It'd be interesting just to try a tracker for a month. It's two dollars and ninety nine cents. Mm-hmm. Try that out for a month if you're going to use it. It's probably like twenty five bucks to get the device. That I could see. Like, am I actually going to use this? So I'll I'll try it for thirty days and it. If, if I lose 25 bucks, I lose 25 bucks. So aside from that, I think or I think there, there is one sketchiness they talk about in this article is um, you are responsible for 100 percent of the damage you cause to an item in your possession. That's rough. That, that is that is rough, especially on things like watches and wearables. Right, right. But also, I mean, this is a, you know, obviously you work for a company that has a lot of relationships with a lot of different companies that you can test stuff out, right? Mm-hmm. What, or, but you don't have relationships with, ships with every company, right? Right. So, or if you're a smaller company that can afford X to test out devices to see how they work with what, you know, whatever you're trying, you know, whatever the application, business application is. This could be an affordable kind of thing for test driving, you know, things to implement. I want to know how much ODG R7 smart glasses cost normally, because the rental fee per month is $190. Wow. Wow. Um, most of the most of their stuff's very affordable. I mean, you can you can rent stuff off of here for three bucks a month for you can get a Wi-Fi extender for five bucks. You were talking about the Apple Pencil for ten bucks. I mean, there's a lot of. If you need some bigger, bigger monitors for 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 one event. Mm-hmm. Oh, there you go. There's 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 a cool kind of deployment idea, right? Yeah. Uh, gaming, like I said, starting a little. I don't know. Gaming starting at fourteen ninety a month. I, I presume this is the the newer consoles. Yeah, you can get a Nintendo 3DS XL for fourteen ninety. You can get a PlayStation Four for thirty dollars a month. <laughs> um onesie not included uh you can uh you know xbox in the same way i you know that's that's kind of cool you know what if geez what if i need a bunch of xboxes because we're doing like i don't know a chachi plays type event we want a bunch of xboxes on hand we, you know we can't you know find enough people to call up we, we've actually been talking about the you you know you and i have been talking with somebody about an event where they want a lot of crom- chromecasting mm-hmm. or something boom you know, you just, you know, rent them for the month, implement them for some kind of rollout. What if I decide I want to have um, some kind of iMac in every room at PodCamp Pittsburgh that shows whatever information, right? Go rent them for the, for the month, deploy them, send them back. Um, some people do this already, but it's called the Best Buy return policy. <laughs> <laughs> which I don't you pay a restocking fee anyway. I, I think you do, which, so. which, which works out in the end, mm-hmm. and you don't feel like you're cheating the system. 
So kind of okay there. Um, I think this is. I think this could have some really, really interesting. Um, Hello, America. For now, U.S. shipping is to NYC only. What? Where are these guys based? I don't know. They're ba- well, say bye bye. Say bye bye USA Inc. And that's buy and then buying. Like buy, see you later, and buy as in buy something. Um, okay, so there's a li- they're a little limited right now, but I'm very curious about that. Uh, but no, th- this is, I think, exactly the kind of thing. But then again, I guess you kind of have that with um, rentals for, uh, uh, I'd like to see the comparison on prices for like, you know, I'm renting cameras and equipment and, and, and steady cams and stuff for some kind of project, mm-hmm. right? But this is more for maybe, you know, stuff that that doesn't cover, you know, that aren't specialty, you know, video kind of things. So like more like events, yeah. I don't know. Something to look into. Chilla, that a blast? It's been a blast. It's been awesome, so to say. It's been a cast. Mm. Mm. So, uh, uh, so uh, again, I want to give a shout out. Again, all the videos for PodCamp Pittsburgh are up at PodCamp Pittsburgh's uh, YouTube channel and over on the PodCamp Pittsburgh Facebook. You can check out our talks there about 360 video and VR. Chilla, I'm curious about your thoughts about what we talked about. And uh, as well as our state of podcasting panel with a lot of good friends and great podcasters on there. And there's a lot of other great stuff. Katie from this pro- fine program also talk about Insta content like Snapchat and such. Instagram, all kinds of fun things. Uh, uh, so so go check that out. And a lot of great conversations about social media and technology, uh, mostly towards the digital and social media and podcasting side. Uh, that's uh, YouTube.com slash Pittsburgh or Podcamp Pittsburgh on the Facebook, uh, and look for the video section for that. A lot of great um, stuff if you're in the Pittsburgh area coming up. We're going to have a boot camp. I think we've announced it on our Facebook, but I I still need to roll out the rest of the information to everybody on that and intro to podcasting come up here in mid-September, and we're in talks about some other interesting ideas. Is the thing at the end of September going on? Is that definite? Watch thing. The thing with the Chromecast. Oh, yeah, the thing with the Chromecast. Yeah, I believe it is. Okay. I think it is. Uh, so there's that. Um, from there, um, uh, Chilla, what's going on with you? I don't know. I just got back from vacation. I'm like buried in emails and trying to catch up on podcasts and all kinds of stuff. Well, they can check out other things that you've written over at chillatech.net or John Chilla on the Facebooks, Chilla on the Twitter, Chilla579 on the Instagram. Chill a photo on the DeviantArt. There you go. Did you use any of the Gear 360? On I definitely I used the Gear 360 a bunch on the beach. I really liked it. I thought it gave a really good perspective. I I got a lot of good comments too on Facebook. I posted directly nice. from the from the device out to Facebook. People, it, it definitely brought brought in viewers. Mm-hmm. Um, I mm-hmm. thought that was the, I thought that was a good way to to show people what was going on, not just from a family perspective, but all around me. I don't know um, if you've seen it, but we have we experimented with the 360 camera and the GoPro at a wrestling event this past weekend that had cage matches. I saw you. I saw you setting them up. There was pictures of you. I think putting them this up. This picture in the of cage. me climbing the steel cage. Um, <laughs> I saw that, but that, I didn't that was see at that. the point where I decided I should not climb any further because I remembered that I'm acrophobic <laughs> and clumsy. So I asked the uh, young trainee girl to help me. Uh, so and I handed her the duct tape. I'm like, here you go. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, the footage was great. I actually incorporated it with the edit for the match for the GoPro. And there's at least one entrance um, to, for the cage. You can mm-hmm. go and check out on the IndieWrestling.us Facebook page right now. So okay. go check that out. I have a few more that I recorded. I haven't really looked at them yet. I wanted to get the show done before I, I, I put more out. Um, so yeah. And like I said, it gets the views. People are sharing it. People are interested in it. It, it, It's a different perspective on things. And if nothing else, it's a great thing to, Hey, look what's going on over here. Well, not a lot of people are doing this right now. So I really like, I, I, I'm always interested in, in looking at people's photos, especially yours. You're getting really good at getting like perfectly under the camera in the area where like, that is the one thing that I find awkward about the camera is like I was holding it up like over, this. yeah. I, was, I just go like this. Yeah. I just go arm straight up in the air, so you get less of me and take the picture. Um, I was uh, walking off a of fallow field over here, and they're still work, like they're working on on the tracks right at fallow field, right? 
uh, this 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 track project happening here in Beachview. And there was kind of a a fence that was covered, and I knew they were doing a lot of really interesting things on the other side. So I just stuck my arm up over the fence and took a picture. I haven't even looked at it yet. So I just like I was just like kind of like look, they're doing work, <laughs> and I and I share those with the uh, the community uh, Facebook group every once in a while. So there you go. All right, guys, awesomecast.net. Check everything out. Please subscribe and rate and uh, check us out on patreon.com slash awesomecast if you'd like to contribute. If you want us to talk about the thing you're doing, there's actually some advertising opportunities on there, too, um, in a way. You know, we're just going to do it through Patreon, and we have, you know, I, I think we have a great audience here. So if you uh, want us to uh, help you uh, uh, get the word out on something, you can get um, through there. We can talk about what to do with that. And even options if you want a commercial or something, too. Um, that we can, we, we do video around here, and uh, we can help you with that over patreon.com slash awesomecast for more information. Thank you so much to everybody. Uh, thank you to our awesome chat room at live.sorgatronmedia.com. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, you like Kanye West? Not really anymore. He doesn't smile. He's so <laughs> miserable for a rich guy. I know, right? Right, smile, dude. You got money, good looking woman. Like, what does it take to take Con- make Kanye laugh? Hookers for everybody. Eureka! <laughs> yeah. I found it. Woo! A nugget of gold. Billy. Hey, money bags. Tune in to Funny Money at 7 a.m. Thursdays. Did you hear Tom? He said 7 a.m. Tune in.